When we look for a new outfitting location, one of the things that we want to make sure, obviously, is that there's good game there. One of the things that originally drew Jim and I to Bombazi is the fact that the ranch is not hunted very heavily. Probably only about a third of the hunting that would normally take place on a ranch that size is allowed at Bombazi. And what that does is it allows the animals to grow up and allows us to only take mature animals that have good growth in their horns and also are past their prime breeding age. Yeah, this bull here that uh, Dan just shot this morning, it's actually kind of, it's kind of unique and it's a really good example of the kind of bull we actually want to take on this property. Um, it's not exceptionally long and a lot of people are looking for that length, but this is an exceptionally old bull. The first thing that gives that away is, is the white. You can see he's white all the way through up into the tips and that, that only comes with, with significant age. And the other interesting thing is if you look at the horn at the tip here, what you're actually seeing is the inside of the horn. The outside of the horn has been all broken away and worn down. This guy was probably up in here when he was a bit younger, but he's worn that all down. So we take about 100 hunting days a year on a 10,000 acre ranch. It could probably support up to 300, but we want to keep the trophy quality good and we also want to keep the ranch very private so we never mix groups there if one or two people show up at the ranch they have the whole place to themselves the, the entire time one of the really cool things about Bombazi is the variety of terrain there's everything from wide open rolling valleys where certain animals like the wildebeest and the blesbuck like to hang out all the way to really thick dense stuff which is where you're usually going to find the niala and the kudu that makes for fun hunting style because Depending on the game you're after, you can concentrate on different topography. And it also, because it's rolling and mountainous, it's actually a lot easier to hunt because you're either down low looking up or you're up high looking down and it gives you some vantage to see the animals when they're moving. One of the things about the, the ranches, if you will, in South Africa is that they've created a situation where animals that were nearly endangered can be brought back to uh, healthy levels. One of the neatest conservation stories we have for this particular ranch is the black wildebeest. If you look over my shoulder here, we have a herd of, oh, four, eight, ten, probably 20 black wildebeest. At one point in time, the whole world population of black wildebeest was down to around 50 animals. And it was a couple of individual hunter, hunters, uh, South Africans, that actually brought them back from com almost complete extinction. And now we have four to five times what the whole world's population was just on this ranch. And I think that's really cool and this is the kind of thing that we want to be involved with. The mountain zebra are another animal that we have on this uh, ranch which really are one of these great conservation stories because the mountain zebra, the Cape mountain zebra, opposed to the Hartmans or some of the other zebra that are in Africa, actually live exclusively in South Africa. And in the early 50s they were actually reduced to a number of under 50 is what kind of the reports go. One of the other things that we really like about Bombazi is there's a lot of things for non-hunting guests to do. So they have um, a dedicated tour driver who can take, let's say the wives or, or younger children who don't want to hunt around the ranch and see zebras and see giraffes, see the rock paintings. There's a lot of other interesting things to do there besides just going to um, on a hunt with a professional hunter. One of the things we try to do here is, is get some of the animals right around the camp fairly tame. There's an example back behind us of Anyala. Um, he's probably been feeding in the yard for three, four years. So they get really used to us. We try to make it so that we have like a no hunting zone. This is so that the, the hunting, hunter's companions, their wives, friends, family can enjoy the animals as well. So one of the things you can look forward to here is that waking up in the night, you'll have Elan in the yard, you'll have Kudu in the yard, you'll have Nyala in the yard. And we actually make a express purpose of trying to bring in animals that are not only good animals for hunting, but just the quintessential Africa. And obviously the giraffe is one of those. So we, bring, we brought in a small herd of, of giraffe and the, that Jeffrey, he was born here about two years ago and we hope he has lots of siblings coming along. We try to cater to the non-hunters as well and give you a good experience. And we try to get it so that our game is not disturbed. One of the reasons we have a rule that we don't shoot off the vehicle um, the lodging at Bombazi is brand new. It was built about four years ago by Cam and his brother. 
Um, so, you know, this is, people who've gone to Africa know this, but people who haven't don't know. Africa is typically, especially South Africa, not a roughing it style hunt. You have all your meals prepared for you. They do their laundry for you every day. Uh, the lodging, it's solar powered, so it's not maybe quite as nice as what you're used to at home, but it's certainly not a wall tent up in the Yukon. You can go there, bring your spouse, even if, if they don't like roughing it or hunting it, and they'll be comfortable.